Robinson, a world-renowned, award-winning artist and MacArthur Prize recipient, passed away in 2015. She gifted her entire estate to the Columbus Museum of Art, who fashioned her home into an art residency program. Richard Duart Brown is a 2022 recipient of that residency. All right, Duart, you ready? Yes, sir. Um, oh my God. When she called it ragging on, it was like going on and on, like it was never completed. It was always like you pick it up, you go back and you continue it. So coming here, a lot of people have asked me, did you do all this here? Did you, all, it, a, lot, a lot of it started before it got here and it's just continuing on. Some pieces, as you bring them here, you get to see them from a different light. And so that's really what is happening. You know, you get to um, take them to different places, different environments. It's like a, how a diamond has many facets. You only see one part of it according to the light or, or where it's turned. And so the same with the pieces I'm working on or the things that were, the stories we're telling, the narratives we're getting to, to. It's like the process getting there is like, it's a path. So you're taking something you started and really finishing an idea. See how that, how that turns out? Like, kind of cool. The back of it, you can see some of the underpaint, but I'm gonna probably do something about that now. Let them dry and then mess with it. So, I got I got to play with everything being here. Be um, paint, so uh, just mixed media stuff. Th this thing on Mark Lomax, him playing his drum. Mm -hmm. when, the, when the photographer came, I wanted to show him something different. So I was using a coffee gun. And I made these figures on here. That's, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna take these browns and make these people three different shades, and then finish his skin tone and make the drummer stand out. So I wanted, I made this a long time. It was at the show I did a street light, but I wanted to make it more like connect. So it's canvas and clay. And somebody brought me shells from Florida, so I used this chance to put, be a real mixed media piece. So so I can have stuff that was actually put together in this residency. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna add some more colors on there. This is already rare air, right? Like knowing that Amina was, you know, down here, had things down here, was building down here. But then like to see do our, re it's not even repurposing it, using it, right? It's not repurposed. It's, he is using it for its intended purpose. Like he is creating in this house as if he is possessed, right? I've never seen him create this much this fast with this much range. It just, you can tell that it's had a, a clear effect. To say the least, I like putting it mildly. It's amazing. So do you think artists make space or space make the artist? It's always the artist. Space informs artists, but it always comes down to the artist, you know? Um, space don't create things. Space just enables things. It is the artist who has to put their hands on something and turn it into a thing. 
And so it's always that. That's always the relationship. But some spaces are more, <laughs> have more resonance than others, right, right. right? And so I, as a person who is not a visual artist, right, at least not really, um, you know, coming into here, like the first thing I want to do is start getting the table dirty, you know what I'm saying? Like the space is doing that to me, but it's bringing out the artist in me is what it's doing. It is bringing out the creative impulse in me. And it's doing it for him too, right? Clearly, like, he gonna, like if they gave him another two months in this house, it would start looking like it did when Amina was here. <laughs> so, yeah, this is amazing. Oh yeah, I was totally surprised and caught off guard when Scott came in here. <laughs> and he started looking at everything and I started showing him my um, seed carriers, these things made on toilet paper rolls and, and uh, little gourd seeds, little teeny seeds are inside of them and they're no longer a mass. They're actually a seed carrier, carrier of the culture. But as we get to come in here and bring art in and just make art and see people come in this door and feel like it's, we opened the house and reliving some of these Amina moments. You know, when people walk in that you know, spent some time with you and gave invested in you, it's like family coming in the door. It's like this, you know, you know we always feel like our work's around the middle passage or the diaspora. And then when people come back, when we come back to each other, all the work has been really like about a coming home or finding family. So, and you know, you get this comfort of excitement, you know, and it's just like that. I keep saying red Kool-Aid. <laughs> see some red cooler that I feel like I'm safe. <laughs> I just brought everything that I wasn't finishing and start finishing it. I mean like you know to really finishing it and just sewing it these creatures up there, the like seed carriers. Malik and them came by and got a seed carrier. This yeah. is wild, man. <laughs> this is out of control. <laughs> yeah. So like, I was I was gonna ask like, is the space working for you? But yeah, it, it kind of answers itself. Hell yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden it's like we had a meal in here. Me and Dante made egg rolls and French fries and I had dinner with Sydney and Mina and me and him. It was okay. good too. Hell yeah! He said, I got a picture of him taking all the egg rolls. Like anytime you cook in here, that's like a big deal. Well, I think I got a picture of Dante with us eating, because the Malik's came by here. Look, so this is this was done for the for the, for the Harlem Renaissance kind of thing, but mm. then I start putting this fabric on here and making them like connecting stuff since I've been here with this fabric touch. You know, people dying off the slave ship. Yeah. It's not really the what kind of. It was kind of with that in mind a little bit, mm -hmm. but this is something that I had in my head. These right here, these are all clay pieces. Like, this is clay and wood. It's a whole series of clay pieces. Wait, which got, part of it is clay? The, the sculpture. Oh. Then I took wood right here, and where you see the holes left, I left this so you can still see the clay, but I covered my name, so huh. you can hang them. But Dante doesn't know about this one. <laughs> it ain't, you gotta see it's not finished, Dante. This is him and TJ. <laughs> Oh, I see. See, it's it's, uh, it's going to be painted in better. You you can see some of the carving in the face, but mm -hmm. if I go back, it would black a little bit. It's then passing the brush. Yeah, so you did two work? This is Walt Mills Kane. When I went to Cleveland, I got it from his wife. What now? This, she gave me this, right? Yeah. And uh, cause, cause I was limping a little bit like... <laughs> <laughs> so she said, I got Walt Mills Kane you can have. I said, I can really... So did I came back, the... No, he did, he only did this. Okay. So when I came back home, I decided I wanted to add stuff on it. So I took a Christmas wrap roll. Yeah. And Joe made him, and then Naki brought this from Africa. It says Duart. The whole cool thing about coming into this space with another artist that is that I know that I, we kind of you know, and and then all of a sudden she's gone, and then it's like you walk in here and relive all of those moments. And you know, I felt like a sense of play, like I, like I was really like, like working with this creation that that's taking its life. And so, um, that's what's happening here. A lot of, lot of fun. And I get the idea of knowing how it just spontaneously erupts as you just start making these pieces. 
and putting faces on them and putting life to them and see color come out of them, you know, and turn these socks into people. I wanted to put these little shirts together into people, like turn them into this, like these, like dolls like my grandma make. While I'm here, I wanted to do it while I'm in this space because it also triggers my grandma thinking about Amina, how she would make stuff for us to have a year ahead of time. Before they ever made color dolls, she was putting colors on dolls that had blonde hair and blue eyes, but they were painted with shoe polish and stuff. It was just to kind of put some color on them. But I never understood that, why she would mess up our dolls or the kids' dolls or do stuff like that to them when I was younger, and then I, she never said anything. She just did it. She would just talk to herself and just, just be doing it. There's something gratifying about making stuff and just kind of putting things together and not even thinking you don't have supplies. So it's like um, the, the idea of coming out and taking time to actually sew, um, again, just like it's something part about the connecting of it all. And it makes me feel the presence of my mom and grandma right in, in this space, knowing it's like um, Amina's house. You know, when you first meet people, you have an idea of what they do, but you don't know everything. And as I started to actually hang around him and go places with him, I saw the full spectrum of how versatile he was. So it wasn't just art. I mean, art was the medium that he used most, but you know, there's so many different skill sets that exist inside of him that are the reasons why he's in so many different places and he impacts so many people. So, you know, it's just amazing to see an individual that's given their whole life to the arts, to the community, to children, to growth, to healing, and to get those accolades and, you know, get that respect and appreciation. Um, one of the worst things we can do is wait until somebody's no longer around to finally start talking about them and say how much we appreciate them, how much we love them. We should be doing and saying those things while people are alive. These right here, are made out of air clay with paper towels and gels and beads. And I started making this stuff, showing the kids, because the museum's gonna have me do three lessons. And one of them is this, making right. stuff with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Paper towel, yeah. gel beads. Paper, ta <laughs> but, paper um, towel. Paper towel mm -hmm. and twigs. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this is some, that's what these are made out of. This is, um, this is this is called protector. It's supposed to be symbolic of Amina. Yeah, that one. And I yes, love I love it. It's, it's her ties from oh this house. Oh my God. And they start doing this thing, so I've got cowrie shells in the hair and eyes. And stuff. I love that. So this this is the way I heal, like making art. Yes, yes, Literally, it's yes, the way I heal. exactly. So. We have this cloud of from the diaspora, like of leaving a country as a race, as a group of people, and then you find somebody that comes from the land that we're where we started at, and you just get this unexplainable, like like sense of like. Oh, this is what I was looking for. And then you see right here, I had a white father who didn't know me, or I didn't know him. My mom sent me at 12 to meet him. So I had this thing in my life as I'm making my pieces. I didn't know me was doing too. This is symbolic of my white father that I didn't know fishing, mm -hmm. but this is symbolic of me out on a log fishing with the rest of the world. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. all of us have these other fathers, these <laughs> different what? relatives. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't, don't act strange about what? it. It's not, That's right. It's not somewhere strange. in generation than somebody it's else. Is. It is. And this yes. right here. Ooh. I love, now that one right there. This is called Seven Hours. It's made out of toilet paper rolls. <laughs> no, it isn't. It is. it isn't. Toilet paper and the gourds. You know the toilet paper rolls you get left over? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, because COVID, oh, yeah. was, toilet paper was expensive. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
Oh this is my! Duct, the black and white is duct tape because I want you to feel the African zebra colors. Yeah, and, so and you, fabric and everything. You know right. what I'm saying? So, so you use the duct. The, the we all are so much alike more than we're not. Right, right. You are. Right. We are. And, and look what you did. Look at that. It's amazing. When we when those ladies came in here and we were sharing their art, you felt this like sense of family that it's like they were all. I was giving them all red Kool Aid, you know, and you could see everybody's face lit up, and then all of a sudden. Like this, this thing, like they were listening to me. They, they were the people that were finally, that I was making this art for that walked in the door. So you kind of like, your art's not for every audience. <laughs> and, uh, but when you find that audience, man, I'm telling you, it's just like, you know, it's just not sad too, so don't be offended. I'm just like, uh, I think that uh, when someone really loves, they feel, and that's what that lady felt when she walked in the door. But then I got the gratification of, of sharing my story in this space. So it's like, it's really, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, let me, you know what? I'm gonna give you girls something. How many is it? This is called Amina's Window, and I'm gonna show you what goes with this. When I did it, it was the idea, when I got quiet, um, it was like, I mean, it was with Sydney. And so, it was like, sorry. Uh, it was just this opportunity that we all, she lived the whole time under losing, but then she lived, she lived to work. That's right. To heal. So, like, now she's finished healing, yeah. she's finished working. Yeah. And so, like, and yeah. he's finished suffering. He's, yeah. So, it's like Amina's Ooh. window. When you look into her window, when the windows pour out the blessings. Yes. Um, yes. So, I made this thing called Amina's window. Oh, my God. And I'm going to give you guys one because. Oh, my. That is a lot. Oh, let's see. I think I have enough for everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. During the tour, one of the things you brought up was Amina and Sydney, and I think that you've done something that nobody else could do. You brought her back to life, and I don't think that anybody else could have done that. And not only did you bring her back to life, but you brought her son back to life, and you connected them. Yeah, we are eternal beings, and I think that um, the memories we have are not to be forgotten. You know, and that's the whole thing she did. She kind of like just tapped into something that was undocumented and began the, this journey. And it wasn't just for grief, to hide grief. It was to survive and navigate. So it's like, um, I got a chance to do something for Urban Strings and about Amina. And it was, it's called Amina's window, like the window. Like we always talk about the window of, of heaven open and pouring out blessings that you can't. So it's like this blessing that was poured out on this, from Amina's window, we get to have her, Sydney. Um, and coming in this physical house, it just kind of like churned all the memories. You know, it's kind of funny looking at this stuff on the wall where she's about the chicken that's when it gets to the other side. The man across the river trying to save the fox and the chicken. Just practical stories and humble things that just you can overlook, but it's so precious and valuable. And coming in here, sharing these stories, it's like every chance you get to talk to somebody and tell them, it's like opening the family journals. I really feel like we get a chance to celebrate what Amina gave us. And we continue to celebrate when we connect to other people and share the stories. And when you can pull a window and open it up again, the air comes in, life comes in, and it's, it's just goodbye to gloomy stuff. <laughs> There's such a resilience, you know, in everything that we attempt to do when we do it from love and life and family. So this is what this really is about. Like, I, you just want to like show everybody in the whole city what's happening in here, you know, like, <laughs> like this is what a real artist does, you know what I'm saying? Like this is what a real artist is. So why are you sweating your little one painting? Like I need you to understand, my man got stations, he got floors, he got cabinets. He's just like, uh, and he ain't close to stopping. Nah, man, man. He ain't close. Nah. It's amazing. It's...